Uh, my name is Ajahn Ristin. Uh, today I will present our work IMPRESS, which is a large integer multiplication rewriting framework for BJHLS. This is a joint work with Professor Ismail Sam, Jia Kin, Professor Kun Shiyu, and Professor Zirzan. Today, data privacy is more important than ever, especially for critical personal data such as medical records. However, in many cases, we need to delegate such data to third parties for heavy computation. In a recent study by researchers at EPFL and MIT, kaplan meyer survival analysis and genome-wide association studies are performed in a secure way using homomorphic encryption. With homomorphic encryption, computation can be performed on the encrypted data, so per patient's data are kept secure. And there's a line of research studying privacy-preserving machine learning, such as CryptoNets by Microsoft. One of the main challenges in realizing such cryptographic algorithms is the very large integer arithmetic and multiplication in particular. Depending on the algorithm and scheme, uh, the size can range from 1,000 bits to a million bits. Unfortunately, across many compute devices, there is a lack of libraries and compiler support for such operations. FPGA-based computation stands as a very promising solution to accelerating large integer multiplication. The modern FPGA architecture is heterogeneous with many resource types, including the hardened DC blocks, the carry blocks, the array of lookup tables, and flip-flops. Uh, such heterogeneity brings performance benefits, but at the same time, it introduces non-trivial trade-offs during the implementation of such complex designs. And existing HLS tools may not handle such trade-offs efficiently to generate large integer multipliers. To illustrate this, the table lists post-implementation results of HLS-generated multipliers across different bit widths. Uh, the default HLS implementation of 256 bit multiplication results in only 18 megahertz and this goes down to 5 MHz at 512 bits. At 1024 bits and beyond, the multiplier can simply not be synthesized due to the overutilization. So how do we deal with large multiplications? The common practice is decomposing them. Here are two different approaches for decomposing an n-bit multiplication into an over 2-bit size partial products and a bunch of other logic, including the adder, the shifter, um, the first approach, denoted as the school book decomposition, produces four and over two size partial products and two adders. And the second approach, which is the Karatsuba decomposition, produces fewer multipliers at the cost of more adders and subtractors. This trade off between operations is reflected in the utilization of different resource types on the device, and the table lists the SPN lot utilization of different approaches. Uh, here, uh, Kartsuba gives the minimum DSP utilization and the significance of its lot overhead depends on the multiplication size. Schoolbook is a more lot efficient solution, but it may or may not improve DSP utilization depending on the multiplication size. So the overall resource trade-offs are non-trivial because there can be multiple levels of decomposition and different choices exist at each level. And if we consider different, consider different tiling patterns, the mapping behavior gets even more complicated. For instance, we can implement a 32-bit multiplier with 0 to 4 DSP blocks, or the 16-bit multiplier with either 0 or 1 DSP block. So considering all these different orderings and levels of decomposition, as well as uh, different tiling patterns, the design space becomes exponential. Before we proceed, uh, the school book decomposition is the basic textbook method where we split the operands into two parts and add the partial products. And Karatsuba decomposes operands in the similar fashion, but it uses a clever rewriting technique to reduce the number of partial products from four to three. But again, this introduces new add and sub operations. So let's combine some of these ways of implementing an n-bit multiplier in one graph. On the left, we have the schoolbook method, and on the right, we have the Kurtzuba method. This way, we're constructing an equivalence graph, which is a graph consisting of equivalent ways of implementing or rewriting an expression. So can we make this representation more efficient? For our case, the answer is yes, because we have common sub-expressions, and we can merge them as such. There's actually a data structure which preserves equivalence relationships while implementing sub-expression sharing. And this data structure is called an e-graph. It actually takes its name from equivalence graph. 
E-graphs are widely used in expression rewriting, and some notable applications are theorem proving, program synthesis, and compiler optimization. And I will now walk you through a very simple e-graph example. Let's say we're given an input program a plus b times 2. The corresponding expression graph is given on the right. As, we re as a rewrite rule, multiplying by 2 can be translated to shifting left by 1. So with this rewrite rule, we extend our expression graph to contain these two different ways of multiplying by 2, and that's reflected in the middle box, which now represents two equivalent expressions. Note that the new information is added while we're not altering the previously available information, so in other words, we're applying the rewrite in a non-destructive manner. So an e-graph is basically a set of e-classes, each E class represents equivalent expressions and is actually a set of E nodes. And E nodes represent expressions and they are denoted as a function symbol paired with the children uh, E classes, which are the operands to the function. And the process of iteratively applying all rewrite rules and updating the E graph is called equality saturation. After equality saturation, the E graph contains all possible ways of rewriting the input program. And to see the efficiency of our e-graphs for the integer multiplier problem, uh, this shape table shows uh, the equal saturation result after we apply the transformations, arithmetic transformations, and also the tiling decisions. With only hundreds of nodes, we can already represent a million different expressions. And as we increase the size, the number of expressions grow exponentially, and the increase in the graph size is considerably slower. So uh, in our settings, the e-graph data structure is pretty efficient. Our, our framework impress stands for um, rewriting large integer multiplication expressions for PGHLS. It optimizes multiplication with coarse grain transformations at the arithmetic level and also fine grain transformations at the DSP block level. It defines a rich design space through equality saturation, and it is scalable by means of sub-expression sharing. It extracts optimal expressions according to given application requirements on the FPGA device resources, and the optimized expression is translated to HLS C++ code for FPGA synthesis, and we demonstrate its effectiveness with cryptographic applications. Um, Impress offers significant control over DSP lot utilization, and we show that it allows us to fit more instances of complex designs on the device. As part of our framework, we define k rewrite rules, and this number k depends on the input bit width. The first set of rewrite rules represent the schoolbook decomposition at each possible level. And in order to build a more accurate hardware cost model, uh, we take hardware optimizations in, into account. A very simple example is uh, rewriting a high b high plus a low b low as a concatenation operation. Um, similarly, we have the current schoolbook decomposition defined at each level and then we define different styling decisions as rewrite rules. Uh, these styling-based rewrite rules provide a finer grained control over resource utilization, and this proves really useful for um, achieving flexibility during the optimization phase. And we have another set of rewrite rules responsible for odd to even transformation. Um, since Karatsuba produces one partial product with an odd size, um, we define a rule which transforms that into an even multiplication so that it can be further decomposed in the later levels. And these are described in more detail in the paper. And this is a very tiny saturated e-graph for 32-bit multiplier. This is based on decomposition rules at 32 bits and also the odd to even uh, rule at 17 bits. Uh, we are using an open source tool called Egg as our equality saturation engine. And to understand the compactness of our e-graphs, we are highlighting the roots of the shared sub-expressions in orange. There are uh, internal sub-expression sharing, as we saw earlier, and also there are sharings within the rewrite rule as well. Um, now that we have a saturated e-graph, the next step is extracting the optimal expression based on a given cost function. Um, extraction is actually the process of selecting e-nodes from e-classes such that in the Final expression, each E class contains only one E node. So, uh, based on a cost function, we're basically making decisions among equivalences. Um, and here we're showing an example expression extracted from our saturated E graph. Um, and as the first step, we might be interested in minimizing DSP utilization. 
the open source tool egg provides a bottom-up heuristic to perform single objective extraction. We propose an IOP formulation, which is exact. Uh, what we do is we take E nodes as binary variables and devise a set of uh, linear equations that uh, model the structure and properties of the eGraph data structure. So the details are in our paper. Um, we might also be interested in minimizing lots while setting an upper bound on the DSPs. Existing methods do not support such constraints, single objective extraction, and we use our ILP formulation for this task. And finally, uh, we might as well be interested in co-optimizing VSPs and LOTS for space exploration purposes. <coughs> and existing methods do not support such multi-objective optimization except for a few heuristics which do not guarantee optimal results. And we devise an um, exact ILP-based multi-objective extractor based on the epsilon constraint method. Once an expression is extracted, Impress translates that into C++ code for HLS. Here we leverage subgraph with isomorphism. So Impress matches rewrite patterns with subgraphs in the, equal, uh, in the expression graph, and the corresponding C++ functions are automatically instantiated. Um, we have seen the scalability of our equal saturation framework. Um, here we also list the number of rewrite rules and how much time it takes to saturate the e-graph, which is on the order of seconds. As for the extraction runtime, um, X heuristic is comparable to our ILP extractor until 512 bits, and then ILP starts to take longer at higher bit widths due to the significant increase in the number of constraints and variables in the formulation. Um, although it may take longer, Impress will generate higher quality results, which is shown in this new table. Uh, this top table shows the post-placement cost of the two extractors. Here, the cost is defined as the weighted sum of lots and DSPs. Um, Impress finds lower cost implementations compared to the heuristic, and this is due to some of the underlying assumptions in the heuristic. Uh, and we discussed this in more detail in the paper. Um, to measure period optimality of Impress, we exhaustively collected and implemented all the expressions that correspond to a 64-bit multiplier. And this plot shows post-placement log versus the utilization for each expression. The expressions found by Impress are marked in magenta. 12 out of 14 of these expressions are on the actual Pretoff frontier. And the two non-optimal expressions found by Impress are only 2% higher. Uh, they only give 2% higher log utilization corresponding to the optimal points. And the result of the default HLS implementation, card suba, and single objective extraction are also marked. And to illustrate the flexibility of Impress in controlling DSV log utilization, we are also showing the results for the 256 with multiplication. Now let's scale up to larger multipliers. Um, we have millibit multiplication used in integer-based homomorphic encryption applications. Let's assume that the application requirement is to fit that logic into an SLR region. Uh, we first apply number theoretic transform to break the millibit multiplier into 512 and 1024 bits multipliers. The default HLS implementation leads to a placement failure um, on the device and different cards about decomposition exceed the SLR resource limit due to either DSP overutilization or lot uh, overutilization. In the early decomposition levels, DSP is the bottleneck. And lot becomes the bottleneck in the later levels due to the lot overhead of performing card suba. <coughs> and Impress uh, manages to fit the logic in one SLR region with comparable latency and frequency values. To put it differently, Impress allows us to fit uh, more instances of the millimit multiplier on the device. So uh, compared to three, which was achieved by the baseline approaches, we were able to fit four instances. For RSA, the implementation provided by the y security library had 40,000 cycles, and this utilization is zero because they implemented digit multiplication. We obtained y 2 by modifying their arithmetic units to leverage 256-bit multipliers uh, for improved latency, but this large multiplication resulted in the low frequency, which is 18 MHz. With Karatsuba, uh, again, DSPs are the limiting factors at the early decomposition levels, and the lots become the limiting factor in the further levels. 
but with Impress, we can balance the DSP and lot utilization to fit more instances on the device. Now, instead of five instances, we were able to fit six instances. Six instances. Okay. okay, so in conclusion, we propose an integer multiplication rewriting framework for HLS. We define and efficiently explore a very rich design space, and our framework provides high flexibility across multiple objectives as a result of our ILP formulation. Impress can be used to control resource utilization and balance in many cryptographic algorithms. Thank you. So, there are some questions in the room already. Thank you. It looks like you already presented half of my paper tomorrow. So. <laughs> um, you talked about DSPs and LUTs. Uh, what about frequency? Because that is in principle also part of some Pareto curve, and you could easily imagine that having an impact. Yeah. So the, the the focus of this paper was on resource and balancing those two. But we would put the frequency numbers. We are achieving like comparable frequency compared to all the baseline approaches. That's because we're not directly addressing frequency. We need to change the hardware cost model and also the ILP formulation to take that into account. But it's not straightforward with e-graphs, so that's an ongoing work. Yeah, I could imagine it's hard, but it, as I said, but sending similar stuff and there's a massive impact from what I saw. Yeah. It really makes a difference to the point where you know, you might actually want to take a big resource hit because mm -hmm. it's much higher performance. Yeah, it depends on the application, right? And also we might be able to control latency as well, but it's not straightforward at the moment. Can I ask one more question? Over there. If we have time, we can come back to you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I wouldn't call myself an expert in this, in multiplication, but uh, have you looked at the Toon Cook? I think that's it also. Oh, yeah. Um, Toon Cook is a generalization to Karatsuga. Instead oh, okay. of splitting it into two parts, you can split it to three, four, five, whatever number you want. But that it really help. makes the design space extremely big. There was no point in trying this paper. I had another question about the, uh, the odd multiplication. Mm -hmm. um, so you said you decompose it, right? So you don't do the odd, you do... Because you can kind of do that with uh -huh. n multiplication and then do it an add at the end. Odd is still there because when we are working on the e-graph, we're not altering <coughs> the existing information, we just keep adding new information. So we decompose odd so that the model can consider its decomposition. Maybe in the further levels, it's going to be better for, in terms of DSPs or lots. We never know, right? We have to com consider all those available information. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Then we can go back. <laughs> hey, uh, great talk. Um, with equality saturation graphs, you often have to carefully design the rules so that your saturation process doesn't explode. Um, did you find any rules that were particularly susceptible to this kind of problem? And if so, what kind of strategies did you end up using to make them scale? Um, you might be referring to loops, right? If there's a loop, it goes on forever, it never saturates. Um, not even that. Some, some rules can be applied over and over on the same set of E node, and they can sort of cause the E bus to grow very quickly. So okay. commutation, for example, is a good example where you can keep applying commutative rules. Yeah. Um, to each subject expression, and, and generally you want to avoid commutative rules. Okay. Um, were there any rules like that in the, in the system? Not really, because we're working on beta accurate operations, and we have a set of e right? Like it's school book or or some uh, hardware related transformation. So since it's beta accurate, and the tool is yeah syntactic, but since our framework is beta accurate, we're not getting uh, coming across such explosive situations. Yeah, we never did. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. So if it's a short question, we can go another round. But we have less than a minute. Uh, okay. okay, so you can take it offline. I have right. my poster as well, so we can take it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so attend your poster. So... <laughs>